What's up everyone, Steven here with Neural DSP. And today I wanna to talk to you about the brand new Archetype Gojira plugin. So hopefully you enjoyed that production. I'm gonna go ahead and go through each individual tone and how the Archetype Gojira plugin allowed me to get all the tones used in that demo. All of the presets that were used during the making of this production are gonna be available in a download link in the description below. Let's go ahead and start off with a basic overview of the user interface. We have the input knob, which is going to control the input of your signal into the plugin, your gate knob, your stereo to mono switch for your input mode. You have your presets menu, which is going to allow you to load, save, and delete presets. You have your output level, which is going to control the output of the signal from the plugin. You have your navigation icons at the top, which you can right click to disengage. This is going to allow you to navigate through the individual components of the plugin. And then at the bottom, we have our channel select with our heads and cabinets. If you want to unlink the cabinets from the heads, you can click this icon here. So that way you have a little bit more flexible range of tones to choose from should you want to do that. So let's go ahead and start off with the very first tone that we hear in this demo. This riff was inspired from the track from Mars off the album From Mars to Sirius with a sort of pedal tony vibe and a moving bass line. I wanted to start off with a clean sort of edge of breakup tone, which is why this preset is called Edge-ish. I chose the clean channel with the matching cabinet, a 57 and 414 for my impulse responses. I used a little bit of delay and reverb, and then I used the overdrive pedal to kind of give me that brightness and crisp amount of tone. So let's go ahead and listen to this tone, and I'll turn off a couple of different components so you can hear how they're gonna interact with your signal. So just behind that main guitar tone, I have an additional guitar layer that swells in underneath. You can see the preset is called Captain Sparkles because it's a very wide, bright kind of guitar sound. So let's go ahead and listen to this guitar tone by itself, and we'll hear how the phaser, the chorus, delay, and reverb give it this really ethereal sparkle. I'll turn those components on and off so you can hear what it's doing to your signal, and then we'll listen to it in context so we can hear how it's complementing the first tone.
let's check out this lead tone that I have over this A section. It's based off of the second channel with the third cabinet, a dynamic 57 and a condenser 414 as my impulse responses. For the pedals, I have the phaser pedal on as well as the overdrive just to brighten up the tone. Let's take a look at the delay and reverb. I have the ping pong off, and the only reason why I have that off is because the delay is set for half notes, which means that there's a very long delay time between notes. For the reverb, I do have the shimmer on just so it kind of gives that sparkle to it. And the thing I'm really, really excited about is using the fatso position on this wow pedal as well as a single sub octave from this octave pedal. Now the fatso position for the wow pedal is gonna give you an octave above your signal at the toe position and an octave below at the heel position. Now you're gonna see that it automates down to the heel position up to the toe at the very start of the notes just to give a little bit of a sweep to my signal. At the very top right of the pedal, we have the dry wet knob. So this will control the uh, mixture between your original signal and the pitched signal. Basically the way I wanted to set up this initial section was that I get a really nice light amount of an octave above as well as an octave below. So that way I have the three notes going into the rest of my signal chain. <laughs> Now let me go ahead and turn off some of the components so you can hear how they're actually going to affect your signal. Now this first rhythm tone I had a ton of fun with because I used the wow pedal in its blade one and blade two position to pitch shift the final chord in this riff. To go over the rest of the preset first, it's a relatively straightforward one based off of the third channel with the matching cabinet. Impulse responses are two dynamic 57s in different positions and the overdrive pedal up front giving a little bit of distortion and cleaning up just a little bit of the low end. <laughs> Now I actually used my DAW to automate all the pedal movements as well as the position switch from blade one to blade two. But if you have an external expression pedal, you can assign that via your MIDI mappings menu to then control this externally. So the next tone we're gonna look at is a preset called Soaring Aquatic Mammals. I use this as an additional layer to warm up the rhythm guitar tones as it transitioned towards the end of the song. This is another setting that's going to be based off of the second channel with its matching cabinet, a 57 and another 57 in a further away position from the speaker cone, utilizing the overdrive pedal with a little bit of distortion and there just to kind of clean up a little bit of the low end from my DI signal. So let's go ahead and listen to this in and out of context. The final tone for this demo is a preset I'm calling Splosion. I'm using the first channel with its matching cabinet, a Dynamic 57 and Ribbon 121 for the impulse responses. To start at the very beginning, I'm using the wow pedal in the fatso position, just to give me a little bit of an octave above my signal. I'm using the octave pedal to give me that first octave below my signal. And then I'm running it through some really heavy distortion on the DRT pedal. What I'm trying to do is just crush this signal on the way in. So that way, every time I hit a note, it just sounds like an explosion of sound. So let's go ahead and listen to the sound and I'll go ahead and turn on and off the components so you can hear how vastly different it is with the distortion and the octaves before the clean channel.
And that is it for the breakdown of the tones used in the production demo I created for the Archetype Gojira plugin. Let me know in the comments below what aspect of this plugin you are most excited about using in your own mixes. And on a personal note, as a fan of Gojira, I am super excited about this plugin and cannot wait to use it in more productions in the future. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you like this sort of content, you want to see more original pieces on the channel, go ahead and leave your comments down below. While you're there, leave a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications on when we upload new content to this channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.